प्रणाम सुखदेव प्रॉफिट मेकिंग हैज गॉट ए लॉट ऑफ अगली कनोटेशन इन द सोशियो पोलिटिकल सिनेरियो बट प्रॉफिट मेकिंग इज सेंट्रल टू एंटरप्राइज एंड प्रॉफिट मेकिंग डेफिनेटली मैटर्स टू द इकोनॉमी हाउ इज दिस व्यूड इन टर्म्स ऑफ द conflict between this uh, the profit making and enterprise and spirituality addressed in uh, the old indian systems as far as i can see profit is a measure of efficiency in business if a business enterprise doesn't make profit it has no business to be in business they should be better wind up but how you make profit is very important are you making profit by producing quality goods and selling it at competitive prices so that you give value to the customers money so that you can make profit on a sustainable basis otherwise you'll have to make quick profit and wind up and run away from the society like nirav modi that is not profit making that is suicide you know what is profit profit is the different between money going out and money coming in if your money going out is 10 rupees money coming in is 8 rupees then you are running at a loss you have no business to be there the money going out is 10 and money coming in is 12 rupees or at least 1 rupee or at least uh, uh, 0.5 rupees then you have the you have the Uh, reason to be in business so i would say ever on the spiritual standpoint from practical standpoint profit is a very important measurement of your efficiency your reason to thrive to be in business otherwise you have no reason to be in business and uh, but it should not be by unfair practices or monopoly competition or uh, you know exploiting labor and not following the labor laws and uh, or environmental rules and you should follow everything pay taxes to the government and uh, uh, at the end of it what you have is the profit which the in economics is a land labor capital organization land gets the rent labor gets the wages capital gets the uh, interest and the organization get the profit that is what the organization so uh, from a sound economic standpoint profit is a very important uh, measure you cannot avoid that and spirituality talked about success a spiritual person has to be successful that's why bhagwan says in bhagavad gita tasmad uttishta gandeya yudhaya krudha nichaya get up and fight and when you fight you have to win you are not fighting to lose you are fighting to win tatmatam uttishta yasho jalabasva jitvan shatrun bhumsha rajyam samruddham maya evan ede nihada purvam eva nimitta matram bhava sarvisaji therefore get up fight to win and enjoy the victory and share your victory that's what the lord says otherwise there is no point in doing anything so we have to win we have to share our victory and what our balance remains you have to enjoy this is spirituality so spirituality is not a, uh, a philosophy of failure spirituality is a philosophy of success that's why our all gods are all armed well no god loses a battle all gods win the battle even female gods win the battle when male gods uh, fail then female gods come you move aside let me deal with it so devi has to come to fight against uh, uh, this uh, mahishasura shumba and shumba all those evil forces so success is very central to spirituality and uh, so i would uh, all the all, all go for profit and uh, but how do i make profit do i make it in a sustainable basis am i make it my creating more uh, value to the community value to my customer these are important matters 
Therefore, I strongly recommend uh, the philosophy of profit making. Thanks, Guru Dev. When we speak of uh, the rewards or the punishment system, like in the earlier question when we spoke about how the returns come to the individual, uh, the different components of the economy in terms of uh, the land getting the rent, the worker getting the wages, the organization getting a profit and uh, the, and the capital, different, getting and capital getting the interest. So all components get a reward. But there was also uh, the uh, the reward punishment conundrum where you needed to have a both reward as well as punishment balanced out. How was that addressed when we in our ancient scriptures and uh, in and in Advaita? How was the reward punishment uh, addressed through? Reward and punishment in the uh, okay, the concept of reward and punishment is if you do an act properly, if you put your money in the right, right place, if you put your plant in the right place, uh, if you put your plant in the Himalayas, you know, transportation, <laughs> transporting resources and selling the product will be difficult. So considering all those facts when you invest your money in business, and if you don't invest it properly, then you get a loss. That is the punishment. If you invest it properly, you make a profit. That is the reward. The market decides that. Who should get the reward, who should get the punishment. It is unlike Soviet Union. Soviet Union, the Politburo dictates how many shoes are to be produced, how many apartments are to be built, how many schools are to be made and uh, all those things. So you will wear, all, all of them will be wearing the same type of shoes. All of them will be living the same type of apartment. There is no competition. Finally, it became absolutely a run-down economy. Because there is no individual initiative. Uh, only seven, uh, you know, old men sitting there and deciding things. And ultimately it became one man, the general secretary, deciding things. So market is where you bring all the heads together, compete. And uh, market, I thought I can say the best way of allotting resources, employing resources. So if you don't follow the market rules, the rules of capital, labor, then you lose. That is your punishment. It is not that the government punishes you. In business, it is not the government punishes you, the market which punishes you. Government you can bribe, but market you cannot bribe. Because there are several heads, it's a crowd thinking. And now we know the crowd is the better decision maker, rather than a particular individual, however intelligent he may be. Yes. Not even a computer, however intelligent. The crowd is the better decision maker. As many heads, better the decision. So reward and punishment is natural. And the law of nature, if you put your finger in fire, you will be immediately punished. Isn't it? So, nature takes care of immediate punishment and reward, or punishment may be postponed a little bit, but the long arm of law finally uh, catches you. So, it is all built into the system. If you uh, allow the government to punish and reward, the problem is favoritism comes. Electoral politics decides who should be punished and who should be rewarded. So, the economy goes lopsided, unintelligent decisions are taken, and then the economy collapses like Soviet Union. Why China introduced market forces? An economy, uh, Chinese economy is governed by market forces now. Then politics is decided by the Politburo, but economy is uh, governed by market forces. Because, and that's why China is very efficient. India is still not, uh, it is only after 1990, India introduced market forces. And slowly now more liberalization after Modi. And the economy is going, going like that. India is only the, the, the fastest growing economy in the world now. 7.2 or 7.5 or 7 percent. China has slipped into 5.2 or 6 percent. So market will decide. And some people will come up. Some people, And market is not, uh, uh, it's a foolproof uh, mechanism. 
you know, there can be monopoly competition coming, then the government can interfere, like the government interfered in the, uh, in the case of Microsoft. They interfered, you know, you are coming, becoming a monopoly, so you will have control over the market, then you can manipulate the market. So government will introduce some other agent. So the government and market, you know, when the government see the market is not following, working by the rules because some monopoly agents forces have come and started twisting the law of market or exploiting, then the government will interfere. Or some other dark uh, holes will jump into the system. Disruptive forces, uh, that also. Okay. So reward and punishment goes like that. It's not a written law. Market is not a written law. It's not by uh, government law. It's the market forces. Uh, the invisible hand of the market, as Adam Smith says. You cannot see the hand. To twist the arm of market is not possible because hand is invisible. Swamiji, the reward and punishment also works at the individual level. So, would it be much different from what happens at the uh, market forces level? Or, or is it dealt in a different way in uh, the old Indian text? Are you hinting the kar law of karma here? Partly, yes. Partly, yes. So, when individual uh, make choices, how do you know that choices is right or wrong? By the consequences it creates. Now, I as a father slaps you. It can create a different consequences. You can develop resentment against me and you grow up as a person who resents all authority figures. So that distorts your personality. Yes. Then you cannot work in an organization setup. You are a permanent uh, rebel, a rebel without a cause. Yes. Isn't it? Uh, but it, uh, it can work the other way also. He slaps you when you do something wrong. Then you learn a lesson yes. that I should not have done it. My father meant that. And uh, I am grateful uh, to my father for that. So same punishment can work in two ways. What, is, what determines that may be your individual psyche, your basic composition. If you are a sattvic person, you may take that slap in a different way. If you are a rajasic person, you may take the slap in another way. If a tamasic person, slap has no impact on you. It can be that. So depending upon your mode of personality type, the same slap can work in different ways in you. So at an individual level, a choice, because individual life is a series of choice making, unlike an animal. In an animal, there is no choice. Animals act impulsively. If you step on the tail of a dog, it will turn around and bark. But if I step on your toe, you will look size me up. Oh, he's a six-footer. You rather smile, don't bark. Isn't it? So you have your, your choice. Your prefrontal for, for, uh, cortex works. And then you make the right choice. Sometimes you make the wrong choice also. Then immediately punishment. So through the reward and punishment by positive stroke and negative stroke, you learn from life. You learn from life. So by the age of 40, 45, you are mature enough to know that I should not do this, I should do this. That way you have developed an adult personality. So reward and punishment play a big role in chastening your character so that you become a spontaneously right person. Doesn't, you don't have to deliberate much. Because sometimes there is no time to deliberate, you have to quickly act. Suppose a tiger comes against you, you cannot look into the blue book, what should I do? <laughs> you, you, you should run away, you should run. So it has to be built into your system, that quick response is to be pratutpannam adhittam in Malayalam we say. You know, that promptness of uh, response is very, very important. That's a leader's quality and it should be right. So, reward and punishment plays a very important role in building character. Building character. You know, earlier we used to say punish, 
the, the child need punish use the road to discipline the child then freud game he says don't use the freud leave the leave the road and pamper the child so child should go now we say there is a spare freud and uh, because freud has become a problem now you know this kind of a let it all hang out the policy where there is no punishment there is no uh, punishment for wrong actions uh, made the individuals uh, clueless what to do there is no built in mechanism to uh, restrain uh, your actions that built in mechanism is all taken out let it all hang out philosophy so reward and punishment i think uh, and you can uh, institute a reward and punishment this is a natural law there's nature there is a reward and punishment if you go five with the fifth story and jump from there punishment because you are defying the law of nature so the same all our social laws are imitation mimicking the natural laws with an improved uh, you know improved natural laws. all our social laws is a mimicking is mimicking uh, the natural laws. so reward and punishment is there if you make a wrong choice you will be but the problem is we don't have all the data to know what is the right choice so by trial and error slowly you will come to know and still you make mistake still you make a mistake so what your mistake may benefit the other person so society in a balance benefits your mistake uh, then uh, it benefits me my mistakes may be benefiting you so this way overall in balance society is benefit this is the word thanks for that thank you